I started my clear liquid diet today and so far I've had two bottles of water. I've added a crystal light to one of them and I added a Gatorade Zero. These are phenomenal. These taste just like Gatorade and they're way cheaper. So this has zero sugar and it's only $1.88 at my commissary for 10 packs. And you're supposed to mix them with 20 ounces of water. I just mixed them with the 16.9 ounce water bottles that I have at the house. Tastes just like Gatorade. They're bomb. So I've had two waters and I've mixed them differently. And then I had two Jellos, the actual Jello brand. I also bought the Snack Pack brand, which I'm not a huge fan of. I much prefer like the Jello brand, like the one that you have to keep in the refrigerator. I had two of those and those really helped with me feeling like I ate something. Like it hit my stomach and it made me feel like I was actually consuming food, not just like drinking. I bought some organic chicken broth from the commissary as well. And I tried drinking some of that for lunch. And let me just tell you, this tastes like not good. This tastes like butt. And I realized that the reason why the chicken broth tastes so good usually is because you're making soup and you have all of these different ingredients marinating in the chicken broth. So you have the chicken, the carrots, the celery, seasoning, the onions, all of that mixed in. So this by itself is not good. What I do suggest is maybe make soup for your family because that's what I had to do today. I had to make dinner for my family before I got too hungry because one, I'm still dealing with fatigue. Two, I'm uh, going to be really hungry by the end of the night and I'm not going to, or at least feel like I'm hungry. I'm not going to feel like cooking chicken Alfredo for my family and me not eating it. So I made it today, this morning before I got hungry and I put it in the fridge for them to warm up later. So what I suggest if you want to do chicken broth or vegetable broth is to make a soup for your family and then take the broth from that soup and sip on that because that's the way you get all of the flavors. This tastes like cardboard, honestly. And it's it's an organic chicken broth from the commissary. It's and I think it's one that only the commissary has. I don't know if other like I don't know if it's a brand that like regular grocery stores carry. So so far I've had the two waters, the two jello packs and then I'm gonna attempt to drink this chicken broth because I don't want to waste it but definitely I'm I think I'm going to add the chicken that I made earlier I had leftover chicken from the chicken alfredo I think I might add that to the broth and cook it in the broth and then just not eat the chicken you know and I have carrots too so I might just do that and make like a chicken soup for my husband to eat one day for lunch and I just render some of the broth from it so that's my advice to you. Definitely get one of these. Don't drink these all the time because they're not gonna keep you hydrated. Um, like these, like just because they're electrolytes, like they're not gonna keep you hydrated. And they're only five calories, no sugar. I have these, I have a bunch of flavors in these and these also come with green tea caffeine. So when the doctor gives you the okay to drink caffeine, my doctor gave me the okay to drink caffeine a week after surgery. So I won't feel ready to drink coffee, I don't think, but I will be able to drink the crystal light that I have that has green tea caffeine in it. I hope you could hear me because this is all shaking around. So yes, that's my advice so far. Not that I'm equipped to give advice. This is my first day on this nine day journey. I have to be on clear liquids for nine days purees or not purees full liquids which is like protein shakes and like clear liquids that's for two weeks and then I have to be on purees for a week so I'm not gonna be able to actually eat real like food like chew food for 30 days so that's pretty crazy but so far everything's been doing really well I've been eating really well lately anyway so I really haven't felt restricted and also my mind set is like on like I'm ready. I'm I'm preparing myself for this. It's really exciting. So, yeah, I will uh, touch back with you tomorrow. I will attempt to put this these two videos together so you can just watch it all in one video. So, I love you all. God bless you. Bye. Good morning. Today is the day of my surgery. It is 4:37. I have to leave the house at 4:55 and get there at 5:30. Then my surgery is set for 7 a.m. 
I've done really well with my liquid diet. I have barely been hungry at all. It's consisted of like six jellos a day with like four bottles of water, five bottles of water a day, and uh, mixed in with Crystal Light and other things like that. I'm allowed to drink. <clears throat> I'm allowed to drink a bottle of water or like I can have anything up until 5 a.m. So I'm going to drink a bottle of water real quick. But I have a nervous bladder. So usually when I have things like this or appointments, I usually dehydrate myself. So I'm not running to the bathroom every five seconds, especially with an IV. I'm not too nervous. I got a shower and I wipe down myself. They give you these wipes to wipe everything. I'm super broken out. Uh, because my body is like purging all of the bad crap that I had. I've lost four pounds in two days. That was as of last night. I forgot to check this morning, <clears throat> but they'll probably weigh me at the hospital. So yeah, it's surgery day. I'm getting the kids ready. They're gonna drop me off at the hospital and I will check back when, when it's done, when it's all done. I wanted to give you guys a quick like recap on what's in my hospital bag. It's just a small duffel bag. I've had abdomen surgery before. I've had three C-sections, so I kind of know what I'll need at the hospital. First is socks to go home in, clean underwears, and clean bra. I have my blue light filter glasses because I have a feeling I'm gonna be on my phone a lot because of COVID, the visitors are limited and we don't have childcare like that because we're military and we're so far away from family. I bought this when I had my second child. It's a very large zip nightgown that zips down the front. I bought this from <clears throat> Walmart for like $15. Um, I wore this in the hospital. It's a lot more comfortable than one of their uh, hospital gowns. And this unzips in the front, so they were able to press on my abdomen and look and make sure everything's looking great. I brought a really long tunic hoodie and large sweatpants. Now where I'm apple shaped and I have an apron belly, all of my clothes go above my belly button and that's where the incisions are gonna be. So I made sure I packed something that if it was sore, I could roll it like at my belly button line and then still have a shirt long enough to where you don't see anything hanging out and I'm still comfortable. So that was my thinking with that. I have my ID and my insurance card, which is just your dependent ID, as you know. Oh, I have more stuff in this pocket. I brought my charger and I got a 10 foot charging cord because I will be by myself and um, I don't know where this hospital's like been renovated. So I don't know where their nearest like cord is, but you always wanna make sure you have something at least six foot just in case. So there's my charger. I have my regular headphones in case I need to charge my phone, but I wanna listen to videos. And then I have my wireless headphones, which are my favorite. My ear has been giving me a little trouble. Um, I'm not sure if it's, I hurt my, I know I hurt my neck the other day, but I'm not sure if it's neck pain causing ear pain or if it's um, some type of inner ear issue, but I got some Highlands eardrops. It hasn't bothered me for a couple days, but I wanted to bring something so I could relieve my, my pain. Chapstick, obviously. I also got chewable gas X. I don't know if they'll give me something at the hospital. I assume they will, but on my paper, they said, that I would have to buy Coley's and Miralax and stuff my, on my own after surgery. And with my C-sections, they've always went to the pharmacy and got me those things before I left the hospital. So the fact that I have to go out and buy them myself, I didn't realize until last night. My husband's gonna have to do that. Now every hospital and doctor's office is different, but I bought the chewable gas X just in case I needed it. And <clears throat> I think that's all that's in this part of the bag. On this side, I have a big scrunchie. I have my hairbrush. I have deodorant, because I can't wear deodorant before the surgery, so I'll definitely need that afterwards. And I have a new toothbrush and a little 
toothpaste. And usually they provide that stuff for you. But because of COVID, um, they don't have a lot of beds at the hospital. So they said that I may have my surgery at the hospital and then be moved to a surgery center in town that's also owned by the hospital. They've already reserved a bed for me for that building just in case I need it because they've been having to cancel surgeries because they haven't had enough beds for people. Um, and that was really frightening for me because, you know, I've been rushing to get this done before we move. So I was really happy when they called and said they reserved a spot for me at the surgery center. That way I could still get the procedure and then they would just transport me over there and insurance would cover the transportation fee from the hospital to the surgery center. And my plan is still to stay there just overnight and then leave midday on Saturday. Today's Friday. My ID, um, with my hospital, my husband's going to drop this off after my procedure because one, I might be transported and two, um, they put all of your stuff where, how they read to the hospital is really annoying. And they have three different sections instead of like when I had my kids, they would send me to my room and they would prep me and then they would send me off to surgery. And then I would go to a recovery room for about 45 minutes before I go back to my room with all my stuff. That's not the case. Now it's like an ER setting where there's just like curtains for like prep of surgery. And then they put all of your stuff under your hospital bed. And I don't know if they're gonna move. It's just, it's just too much. I'm scared that they're gonna lose my bag. And not that there's that much stuff in there, but it's stuff that I don't wanna lose. So I'm just gonna have him drop this off to me after. Leave the kids in the car, run it in real quick. It'll be simple. So. Yeah, I just want to give you an update on what I have in my hospital bag that I think will be enough for me for the one-day stay, so...